Are you worried your family history research might be lost to future generations? Is it currently sitting on your computer or hard drive? Maybe it's in file folders that no one wants. We are Lynn and Danette. We're cousins, we're family historians, we're a writer and an artist. And we've joined forces to create Heirloom, pre-made templates that take all the work out of building your family history book. We help fulfill your family history book dreams. Join us every Tuesday for conversations and questions with Lynn and Danette, helping you build your legacy for future generations. Our pages, your story. Welcome back to Conversations and Questions with Lynn and Danette. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, I'm good. Good, good. So today we are going to talk about front matter and what exactly does that all entail? So this is usually those first few pages in your family history book. And it can um, involve a number of different pages. So I'm going to pull up a little screen here and we'll take a look at front matter. So there's a number of pages that we can put in the beginning of our book. And we're going to take a look at those today. And there's also pages that you put in because you have to put them in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So first and foremost, we have a copyright page. And we do have a template for that copyright page in our heirloom collections. And the copyright page is really nothing more than just saying who owns the copyright to this book. So generally the author's names in there. Um, and you can also put in there, you want to put in there the year that it was done. And you can also put in there like your contact information. So if somebody wanted to contact you in order to use maybe some excerpts from it, or maybe to get copies of the book, you could put that on the copyright page. The next page is our dedication page. Now this usually again goes in the very front of the book after the title page usually. Um, and it's really just your chance to sort of honor someone, to dedicate the book to someone. So maybe you're doing a book about your parents or your grandparents. Um, this, the dedication page is the perfect opportunity to, to dedicate it to those. It's, and it's usually something very personal, um, very short, doesn't need to be anything long, but you can dedicate to family members, maybe to friends even, um, people who, um, are impacted by the book, or maybe are even featured in the book. Um, you can dedicate it to the readers of your book. Or anybody that maybe just offered you inspiration in terms of writing that book. So that's our dedication page. Then we have an acknowledgements page. And this is where you want to thank the people who helped you to write or publish the book. So it's your chance to give credit to people who maybe contributed. Maybe you were able to interview them. Maybe they submitted pictures or wrote a little story or added little quotes or captions to your book. This is, this is your opportunity in the acknowledgements page to include that. So again, it could be anything from family members, um, people who helped you with your research. Uh, it could be if you had an editor, if you had somebody go through and edit the book, if you had a graphic designer, um, anybody, a, book, a writing coach or a book coach um, or a publisher. So lots of people that you can include in that acknowledgements. It's not generally more than one page or a paragraph on a page. Uh, you just want to keep it really simple. And then we also have a forward. So what a forward does is it introduces the reader to the author and the book. Um, so it's usually written by someone um, else. So it's not written by the author, but it's written by somebody who may know the author and maybe wants to, um, it's sort of like a little bit of an endorsement of the book. Generally, we don't see this too much in a family history book. But uh, definitely, if you were doing, perhaps maybe if you're writing a family history narrative, something along the lines of a novel book, then this might be something that um, you would want to include. Then we also have a preface. And this is generally just a little 
introductory passage um, written about the book by the author. So just a little something that um, sort of gets the, the juices flowing for the reader about the book. And then we have an introduction. So the introduction is generally sort of part, considered really part of the main body of the book. So it's, um, it's that opportunity for the author to get the reader going into the book. It, it's almost could be like a prologue or a first chapter even. Um, it could cover sort of a description of what is in the book, um, the contents, anything specific, maybe anything that you feel that the reader needs to know about before they get into sort of the guts of the book. So those are, are basically the front matter of our book. And so you don't necessarily need all of these things. Um, you can pick and choose which ones you want to include. And then generally after any of these, that's when your table of contents would come into play. Um, so you want to I would probably put table contents after the the forward actually and then your preface yeah. or introduction right would probably follow after that yep and so and, and there's also nothing wrong with putting i say a few of these pages like the acknowledgements page you could probably put that at the back of the book too if you wanted to do that and finish up with your with your acknowledgements uh nothing wrong with that as either so but I'll deal with, I think we'll do another video on sort of the, the back end of the book and what we can have at, at the end. So that's it. Anything you want to add to that, Danette? I don't think so. I think you covered everything, but I agree with you. I would have put the acknowledgements, the biography or whatever you do towards the end yeah. or at the end, actually. It's definitely like bibliography, author's notes. Um, end notes, those type of things, as well right. as an acknowledgement. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to do a little video on what author's notes is all about. So, um, but those we could definitely do at the back and keep. Otherwise, you've got like, you know, nothing worse than a book when you've got like 10 pages to go through before you actually get to the start <laughs> of the book, right? Besides, so, you don't need any uh, reference or bibliography page until you get to the end. I mean, right. it's kind of weird to put it up front. Yeah. 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 And you don't necessarily need a table of contents page either. So not, you know, don't feel the need to put a table of contents in. Some people do um, and some people don't. It's It all depends really on the size of your book. The type yeah. and style of your book and yeah. everything. Yeah, style, right. But um, again, so those are there for you to consider. Um, choose which ones you'd want to include. And that's it. That's it for this week. Short and sweet. So if you've got any questions about that, please drop them below. Um, and if there's anything else you want us to talk about, please uh, send us a little email or drop them in the comments, ask your questions, and we'll deal with them in upcoming videos. Because we have not gotten many questions. No. So that either means we're doing an excellent job, which I find <laughs> hard to believe we didn't miss something. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we're just good, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's it until next week. Yep. We'll see, see you guys next week. week.